Hi, Paul Jacobus, Legacy Group, Berkshire Hathaway Real Estate. It's been a couple weeks since I've done a video, so I apologize for that. I've been buried working on a new project we're gonna roll out, um, and you'll stay tuned for it because it's a veterans project, and these guys have the answer to the suicide problem that we're facing for veterans. I mean, they have the answer, so um, we wanted to get behind that and really start working on pushing some of that stuff out. And you'll see more about that in a different video, okay? So stay tuned. Um, but that's been consuming me for three weeks and I needed to shut the video off and work on that. Um, but I owed it to you guys who have been tracking and following this to discuss Flint, okay? And to tell you the truth about the Flint water crisis and that situation. Um, so here we go. First off, we achieved our goal. Our goal as a team, all right? When I, when I got involved and the team got involved in December, there was virtually no effort happening of people going into the community and delivering uh, resources into the community. You had a couple of people that were doing some things to raise awareness and were trying to work out water points and stuff and that were really working on some things. And they, you know, one of those groups, you know, is still active and they, they, they meet very well and, and all that, but they just didn't have a lot of support Right? Um, they had some media exposure, but it really just didn't gain any headway at all. The government wasn't involved doing anything to help. Other 503C charities that are larger, that have bigger budgets, weren't involved. And it's a huge crisis affecting 100,000 people, yet nothing was happening. So um, when we got involved in December, our goal was to change that. And we did. Uh, we made it go viral. And now it's a nationwide, actually international conversation. All right. And so that was that was the goal. It was really to help and then to, to try to raise that awareness attention because the problem is bigger than us. And I don't make a living running charities. You know, we help our clients. We put more money in our pockets than everybody else when we buy and sell houses. And that takes a lot of work and a lot of time. Um, so I can't make it my full-time endeavor to work on charities, you know, um, but we want to always be giving back to the community and, and we always want to have a charity project running and, and be giving that support. So it's really important. Um, and, and with Flint, it, it was all consuming for us for a few months until we could get all that other support and involvement. Um, but we did, and now it's a nationwide conversation. I was at my friend's office, a Merrill Lynch office, and I picked up uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, and I read an article, and the title was, What Would It Take to Flint Proof the Nation, was the title. And then they were talking about that. So that's it's a now a nationwide conversation where it really wasn't before. You had some target groups that were talking about it, but the mainstream public had no idea. Now you guys know, and the mainstream public knows, and that's what's really important. So moving forward, we are stepping away from that project because government is now involved. 503C charities who make it their business to do this kind of work are now involved. They have millions of dollars and they have a bunch of support. So we're stepping away. Are they solving the problem? No, they're not. Uh, actually, they're going to screw it up probably three, four times before they get it right. Don't get negative about that part though, okay? Because that is typical for any kind of bureaucracy, bureaucratic involvement. I mean, it's just what it is. They don't, they're not results-based and it takes a long time for them to, to get it right. But at least they're working on it and they're solving it. So I, I have confidence that they'll at least get to a better place here um, in due time. And it's just more than I can do for them. I cannot do what the millions of dollars that they've had donated to them and all the personnel that they've had, um, I cannot do for them what that they could do with that. You know what I mean? And so we have to step away from it. Um, people who want to donate can call us, you know, and we'll, we'll channel you to the right direction to send that money. Um, people that want to get involved and volunteer, we can ch channel you there too. So we're still going to be involved. We may do some fundraisers in the future, um, but we're going to channel our efforts into this veterans project because that needs a lot more help now. Okay, so that's that's where we're at. Um, the other part about Flint, so truth about it, people wonder well, what's what about solutions and things of that nature. Well, there's a couple things you need to know if you're going to help out with Flint, and, and, and you just need to know it as an American, is that this is a nationwide problem, not just a Flint problem. 
So you need to understand that. Again, that title of that article was What Would It Take to Flint Proof the Nation? Um, news article today just came out says lead taints drinking water in hundreds of schools and daycares across the USA. So that's USA Today. Go look it up on Google, okay? So what that tells me and what should tell you too is, is this. Um, we have an infrastructure that's failing and crumbling here in the United States. Um, the shelf life on some of the things in our infrastructure, like our pipes that provide us with water, had only about a 50 year you know, shelf life or whatever. And uh, we've, way, we've long passed that now, okay? And so we need to go in and fix our infrastructure, but we're printing $3.3 billion a day and we're working on whatever other pet projects. It's not um, going to get a politician any more votes to say, I'm going to spend millions of dollars on this infrastructure problem to prevent something bad from happening. Uh, that's just not going, that's politicians shy far away from that. All right. And so what we have is a serious problem that needs to be addressed. My personal opinion, it's not a problem that government can solve. Um, my personal opinion is that if you had three competing water companies that had to come up with a co-op agreement for shared pipes and who could be sued if they poisoned people and held liable and, you know, were a for-profit endeavor, my, uh, my assessment is that Flint water would be the cleanest, cheapest drinking water in the United States. Okay, um, with that healthy competition and that efficiency that co companies will drive. Um, keep in mind, they're spending hundreds of dollars a month right now for water bills that for water that they can't use, and um, nothing's really happening. It has been happening for them to fix it to any scale. So, so, so. Anyway, that's my opinion, but you may have a different one, and that's okay. I don't want to get political about it, but. It is, a, it is a large nationwide problem, so you need to know that, okay? Um, and then the other part is that you need to know that um, whenever things get political and charities, now, now everyone starts getting involved, you start getting a lot of money involved and there's possible negligence from government and stuff like that. Um, whenever that happens, you get a huge power and money grab that happens with these charity projects. It's no longer about the charity anymore. I'm watching people's YouTube videos and different things for people who are involved. They're literally, literally giving themselves awards for their efforts in Flint and all this crap. You know, I'd be like, if my real estate team gave me an award, like, oh, I gave myself an award for how, you know, philanthropic I am, pat myself on the back. It's stupid, right? So anyway, that's what's happening though. There's a lot of the people with the hero complex jumping out thinking that only they can help. And it's, it's dumb. And I will tell you, we had 180 volunteers on weekends uh, to help. We were the largest non-government organization um, helping in Flint for a while until they could get other things rolling out there, right? Um, and that wasn't me. That wasn't all me. I mean, obviously I played an integral role, but I couldn't have done it without all of those volunteers and companies and people getting the word out and you guys who are listening. So there is no hero complex here on our end. It's just we're a bunch of people getting together to help. But unfortunately, that's not what happens with a lot of these people. There's a little bit more selfish motivations. They're more motivated uh, to get on television or whatever. They spend more time um, getting political so they can get media attention versus um, actually helping. And so you have that going on. Uh, then you have the money grab. You know, uh, 503Cs and different people are competing with each other for funding and it's crazy. And whenever you get millions of dollars, that's what it is. We try to stay hands off the money as much as possible. The little bit of money we raised, we went directly into resources for the project. And then I tried to dissuade people from sending us money. Instead, I wanted them to send us resources, trucks, for example, for deliveries, stuff like that that we could use, not, not just cash so we didn't have to handle that stuff. I don't make my money again on charity, but a lot of people are taking a pretty substantial cut and so money is a motivator. So you guys need to know those things. Those are the truth about Flint. The truth is it's a nationwide problem, not just a Flint problem, and that there are a lot of people involved that have different motivations, okay? So if you wanna get involved and help, you know, I'll point you in the right direction to people who are not uh, selfishly motivated or, or, or have the wrong uh, intentions. 
you know, and, and you can get involved. And they would appreciate it. They do still need the help. Um, but in the meantime, we are going to channel our efforts, like I said, into a different project. Uh, we're very happy with our success here with this project. I mean, you know, we have an ability to market things and make them go viral. That's something we do. Uh, we do it for our individual clients when they list a house. We do it for charity. You know, we did it for this charity project and it worked out on a big scale. And uh, we're going to do it again for this other veteran charity project that is so important to me as a vet. But um, it's also, it's just that missing link, you know, it's that missing, there, there's, there's a problem that has been unsolvable right now with helping vets reintegrate, you know, and there's too many that are going to prison, ending up with drug alcohol problems, or committing suicide, or just not getting employed, or all this, these problems when vets get off of active duty. These guys had the answer to the problems. When I came across that, I was just floored. I was amazed at, wow, and it's so simple, actually. So we can all help with that and scale that out. I'm really excited to, to get that going. Um, so stay tuned for that. But um, in the meantime, thanks again. Thanks again for all your help with Flynn. We accomplished the goal of making it go viral, getting them the funding and the attention and the help that they need. Now, what they do with that help, though, is going to be up to them. And uh, hopefully they'll do the right thing. Thanks again. Make it a great week.